Okay, we've been given an algebra question where we're probably going to be tested on our knowledge of the index laws, various ones, and our ability to work through a problem without making too many silly mistakes. So what we've got here is this is a more complicated uh, problem that we've been asked to simplify this expression here. Now, what makes it complicated is we have these addition signs here. Now, with addition and subtraction in expressions concerning index laws, we the index laws won't apply per se because no index law has a addition or subtraction sign involved. So what we have to do here is we have to take out common factors and attempt to sort of cancel out terms, so to speak. Okay, so the first index law we're going to use is going to be, I'll write them over here, a to the n times by a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m. Now we're going to use this law to work backwards with the three terms out the front. Now 3 to the n plus 1 that's going to be equal to 3 to the power of n times 3 to the power of 1. Because then we would add the powers together. Now we're going to add that. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to try and get all of our terms in the top and the bottom as a common base. So we're going to take 9 and we're going to convert it to its prime factors, which is just 3 squared. And this is going to be all divided by 3 to the power of n. Now this is going to be times by 3 to the power of negative 1. And we're going to add, now instead of adding 1, because that won't give us all three terms, we're going to use the index law a to the power of 0 is equal to 1 to work backwards from that one term, and we're going to convert it to 3 to the power of 0. Okay, so this sort of expression here is already starting to look a little bit like more inviting than that initial one over there. So what we're going to do now is we can't factorize or cancel anything out yet because of these addition signs here. So what we're going to do is we're going to factorize out a common factor on the top or the numerator and we're going to factorize out a common factor on the denominator and hopefully we're going to be able to cancel a few things out. So, you can see that the on either side of the addition sign, we've got a common factor of 3. Now, 3 has to multiply by 3 to the n on the left-hand side of the addition sign. And has to multiply by, well, to get 3 squared, we have to multiply 3 by itself. So, it's going to be 3 to the n plus 3. Now let's have a look what we've got over here. Now this might not seem as intuitive on the denominator, but we're going to take out a common factor of 3 to the power of negative 1. Now The reason we're going to do that is because we have to times 3 to the n by 3 to the power of negative 1. That's the easiest way to get a factor out of the left-hand side of the addition sign. And we can also multiply 3 to the power of 1, negative 1, by a number to get 3 to the power of 0. And we'll just go through that in a second. So, like I said, the first, the left-hand side of the addition sign has to be multiplied by 3 to the power of n.
and we're going to have to add now 3 to the power of negative 1 we've got to times it by something that is going to bring the power to 0 now what that's going to be is we're going to multiply it by 3 to the power of 1 and this is because we can just do a side note over here if we have 3 to the power of negative 1 and we multiply by that by 3 to the power of 1, or just 3, that's going to equal, using the top index law, 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3 to the power of 0, or 1. Okay, so using that little piece of logic there, we can say that we're multiplying 3 to the power of negative 1 by 3 to get back to 3 to the 0, and we're going to close that bracket off. Now, what we can see here is in the numerator and the denominator, we've almost got two separate terms. We've got a 3 and a 3 to the n plus 3 term in the numerator, and we've got a 3 to the negative 1 and a 3 to the n plus 3 in the denominator. So what we can do is these two have a common factor of 3 to the n plus 3, and so that will cancel out because a number divided by itself is equal to 1. So what we're left with is equal to 3 to the power of 1 over 3 to the power of negative 1. And we can employ this index law here, a to the n over a to the m is equal to a to the n take m. So using this index law, we're going to go, well, this is going to equal 3 to the 1 subtract negative 1, which is equal to 3 squared. So our final answer, once we've done all of the simplification process is 3 squared or 9. Okay, so let's, if we run back through this, what I, what I think is the best or the most important thing to take away from a question like this is when you see addition signs or subtraction signs in a question like that, we must think to factorize. Like that should be the first thing that we see when we see these addition signs. We shouldn't be trying to, you know, cancel things out and uh, just do things that kind of make sense, but yeah, a little bit iffy. What we need to do is as soon as we see an addition or subtraction sign, we should think, how can I factorize this to how can I factorize this to get a common term on the numerator and the denominator so I can then cancel them out because you can't just cancel out like you have to have terms in brackets so yeah, when you see a question like this, the first thing I would think about or I would ex ask anyone to think about is to think about how can I factorize this to get common terms on the numerator and the denominator. Anyway, I hope that helped. I, it did take quite a long time for me to go through all the steps as well as the index laws, but we got there in the end. Cheers.